Welcome, I'm Maria Bailey, as I said, of Mom TV, and I'm super excited to be joined today because of uh, Chick-fil-A's generosity. We want to welcome Chick-fil-A moms. I'm excited to have this opportunity to talk with author Mary Ann Richmond. She's the author of Chick-fil-A's newest board book series for toddlers under three years old. A big thank you as well to our Chick-fil-A moms for submitting some of the questions that we're going to pose today to Mary Ann. And, you know, Mary Ann Richmond is a beloved author and an artist and has touched millions of lives for nearly two decades. Through, she started when she was like a mere baby. Um, through her emotional and thoughtful books that pull, put feelings into words and help you connect with those that mean the most to you. She lives with her husband, Jim, and four children in Northern California where she's joining us today. She finds inspiration from her own life and by listening to people's stories. She'll tell you, yes, we're all different, but we want the same things for our kids and uh, for them to feel loved and to feel valued. And I would vouch for that as I travel around the world. It's amazing how consistent moms and dads are. She hopes that her books give parents the words to communicate just that. And I am super excited on behalf of Chick-fil-A to welcome Marianne to Mom TV. So welcome Marianne. Thanks for your time. Yes, you're welcome. Hopefully my dog will stay quiet. <laughs> the kids so, are a the dog you have to worry about. That's right. So how excited are you to have your books at Chick-fil-A? Well, super excited. And it was such a, oh gosh, just an authentic experience to even have that happen because it all started with a Chick-fil-A mom who received one of my books. And she was so excited that she's like, oh, I just have to tell everyone about it. And um, so she used to work at Chick-fil-A, coincidentally. So she got back in touch with some um colleagues of hers and she's like oh I want to tell you about this author and her books and so that's how it all started I mean it was just super random and very cool are your kids so proud of you <laughs> um yeah good question you know they just you know how that is it's like oh yeah that's just what my mom does and I, I don't think they think it's I don't know I think it's just normal for them just that my books are always around and um, but yeah, I do think they're proud. I think they're proud when you go to a store and they're like, hey, mom, there's one of your books. And we straighten them on the shelves, of course. And um, yeah, make sure, you know, if anything's covering them, we kind of move that aside. And so it's kind of a little family joke. <laughs> Heck, I give my kids Chick-fil-A gift cards and they get excited and proud that I'm associated with Chick-fil-A as well. So, well, And you know, there's not that many. Like we were in Minnesota. I just moved here after 25 years. We were in Minnesota, and we don't have a lot of them around. So um, it's you know I mean that's just a little bit different that but where you are they're so abundant and we have to search a little more to find them. But that's we have awesome. we have found the ones within the ten mile radius that's of where we are now. That's what makes yeah so very very special. So you have a exactly you have a series of books and the titles include if. I Could Keep You Little, Hooray for You, yes. The Night Night Book, I Believe in You, and I Love You So. And um, yep. we have gone out to Chick-fil-A Moms and gotten some questions for you. So um, if we can get started, I'm going to throw the first one out to you. How do you, get, okay. how do you motivate yourself to write? I mean, you have four <laughs> kids. Yeah, but they are older now. So like right now, they're all at school. But um, uh, let's see, how do I motivate myself? Well, I have to treat my day very ske like scheduled, you know, like I get up and I get them out to school and then even though no one, like I don't have coworkers except my dog, um, you know, I put on clothes, you know, and I walk past laundry and I walk past thinking about what I'm going to make for dinner and I treat my day very uh, focused, you know, like my work day has started now, it's 9 o'clock and so I have my list of things I want to get done and I, I work a full day and then at 3 o'clock I have to get my 11 year old from school and so that's kind of when my work day winds down but it really is um, making deadlines for myself even though you know no one's really tracking me. <laughs> well, you also, 
are you also motivated by touching the lives of the people who read your book? I mean, do you think about them as you're writing? I do. I, I mean, I get the sweetest, kindest letters, and those are really um, very inspiring to me. And then I make it a point to try to get out. Like on Friday, I had the pleasure of meeting with a mop, MOPS group, Mothers of Preschoolers, at a church locally here. And oh my gosh, it was such an uplifting morning. And I just realize how important that is for me to do and hear from these moms and talk to them and reconnect with their heart. Because that is all inspiration for me to keep writing and keep capturing, you know, their stories and, and what we're all feeling. And what about um the fact that you you write children's books. Have you always wanted to write just children's books, or do you see yourself going in another direction? You know, no, I, no. I never thought I would be doing this for my livelihood. I mean, it, it just was very, um, you know, how life unfolds and gives us a story, and sometimes it's not the one we envisioned. I was going to be the corporate girl. You know, I was going to be working in the office and wearing the suit and doing that whole thing, and then life just completely had different plans for me. and. Um, I actually, it all started with, I had brain surgery in my early 20s to remove a benign brain tumor that had been the source of epileptic seizures as a kid. And during my downtime from that surgery, I started hand painting thank you cards for people. And they were really simple cards. You know, it was just a little watercolor on paper. And a friend of mine who was visiting during my surgery was like, Oh, what are you up to? I'm like, oh, I'm just painting these little cards. And he started selling them to gift shops in our town. And wow. yeah, and started coming back to my house with these little order, you know, orders like Susie wants 10 and Jane at the gift shop wants 20. And I'm like, you are kidding me. So I had this little cottage business going where I'm hand painting every single card. And after like a thousand of those, it was like, you know, this really isn't that fun anymore. So I yeah, like, well, that was fun for about 10 cards. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even doing them on my computer. You know, you make a mistake, it would crunch it all up and start over. Um, but during that time, I wrote what would become my first book. And it was a story called The Gift of an Angel. And it was a story of how God puts guardian angels into our lives to care for us and you know walk along the journey with us and it was really a tribute to my now husband for walking alongside me during this health crisis mm -hmm. but I read it to a friend and he was like oh my gosh that that's a beautiful story you should make that into a book and so I self-published The Gift of an Angel in 1990 seven I mean a long time ago um, and I made it into a baby book you know for new parents with this idea that God gives a guardian angel for every new child that is how book writing started Wow! and yeah so and then my second book was actually about loss it was called the gift of a memory and that was inspired by a mom who lost her little boy and she was really educated me about the whole grief journey and that People don't know what to say to you, and they don't want to bring it up because they don't want to make you sad, and you're sad anyway. And I was really, really touched by her story, and I thought, wow, well, maybe I can put into words what, what I'd want to hear if I was grieving. And so with these two books, I had birth and loss, and I just really, really was passionate about putting words to our life journey. And so that's... I started filling in, you know, I filled in with unconditional love and celebrating individuality and I have I wished for you, which is about the adoption journey and if I could keep you little and so that's how I fell into what I'm doing. So it really wasn't I want to write kids books, I felt I really want to write life story books. Right. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you that um as the mom of two adopted children, I actually have read your book and used it with my own children. And you. it is amazing how your words just, you know, sometimes when they come out of your own mouth, your kids are like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But 
But if they come out, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's a totally different, um, it's a totally different experience. So, um, yes, it, and I have, beautiful. thank you. And, and I think that is like my greatest gift back is when, like you just said, like I used your words to help me connect with my child or tell them how much I love them or explain our adoption journey and your words help me do that. I mean, it's yes. like, wow, I got to be part of that in a really small way and that's just fabulous to me. So um, do your children ever come to you with ideas? You mentioned you have an 11-year-old. How old are the rest of them? Yeah, so they're, um, I've got 17, 16, I have to think about this, 13, 11. Yeah, so now I'm kind of in that next phase where it's amazing the difference 10 years makes. I was thinking about that. You know, like 10 years ago, I had 7, 6, 3, 1. Right, That's just right. 10 years. And all of a sudden now I'm in this whole other, you know. Space. Totally, totally. Um, they don't necessarily give me ideas, but they'll, like that 11-year-old, he'll pipe in with what should be in the drawing, you know. He's like, well, Mom, if that kid is scared in his bedroom, he needs a flashlight. You have to put a flashlight in the picture. I'm like, oh, yeah, good point. Good point. I need a flashlight. <laughs> so, Or I'll read them things. I'm like, what do, you, do you think this sounds good or not good? Or they're like, that word's way too big. That No four-year-old's going to know that word, Mom. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to, I need to simplify a bit. And Yeah, so they're, they're really helpful. That's funny because my kids do the same thing. Like, they'll say, Mom, I gotta send this guy a text, and you know, um, I'm in. I'm having a disagreement with one of my friends. What should I say, or how should I respond to this text? And I'll say something to them, and and she'll go, Mom, that sounds like a businesswoman would say that. <laughs> I will break out in verse, though, like just random moments. That, you know, my. 17-year-old son was eating Cheetos the other night or something, and he was dipping them in ketchup. And I'm like, if I could keep you little, I'd cut your bread in shapes, but then I'd miss you knowing I like ketchup with my Cheetos. It's supposed to be great because <laughs> it's supposed to rhyme, but he wasn't eating grapes. So. <laughs> so that's great. So what do you think? Um, I have to tell my husband to quit talking so loud on his phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just a nuisance. That, see, that's a challenge. Um, yeah. Being, uh, webinar, husband. We're having a webinar. <laughs> right. And also being a mom and working from home. Isn't it funny? And, you know, most of, a lot of our Chick-fil-A moms also are run businesses out of their home, similar to the way you are doing it right now. And it's always that life kind of comes into the, the screen every now and then, right? Yes, I know I had some friends over who are kind of new friends, you know, so I'm new to California. And it, it's just like when you're a new mom and you're making your first mom friends. I mean, it's, you got to, it's like you feel like you have to be really brave. So I had these two women over that are new friends and my son comes down and he's like, Mom, <gasps> oh, there's the dog. Okay. Um, he goes with the story. He's like, he's like um, yeah, Oda's just barfed all over the hallway up there. And I'm like, yeah, thanks for telling me that right now when I have my new friends over. <laughs> so, yeah. Don't you think like, that's, kind of, um, that's kind of the joy of being a mom, right? I mean, you know, life just happens. Well, like and, dog. Okay, so to that point, Maria, this book is not in the Chick-fil-A meals right now, but, okay, this one right here. It's uh -huh. called Oh, the Things My Mom Will Do. And this is totally a slice out of motherhood. And there's a line in there, and it's um, I had written it initially, um, you know, my something like my son calls me, he's feeling icky sick. Mom, you have to come school, come to school, come quick. And then I get to school and he vomits in my purse, you know, that kind of thought. And source books was like, no. You, you can't write vomit in your purse. And I'm like, but that's totally what would happen. And they're like, well, and they're like, well Marianne, this still needs to be a, a pleasant reading experience. <laughs> and so I was sharing that, and they're like, well, that's just a mom's life. I mean, you catch vomit in your hands and your purse and anything that's available. But as if you read the book, you, it won't say vomit in your purse. So. 
But it, it, was a, it was a really fun book to write about the things that mom will, moms will do. They'll chase the school bus and they'll they'll feed the hamster out of an eyedropper because it's sick. And right. yeah, just like the things we do, it's crazy. I know. I've been cleaning a rabbit's cage for about 14 years until all of last week when finally <laughs> my daughter was willing to give up the rabbit. And I, I literally, last Sunday night, said to my husband, oh, my God, I don't have to <laughs> for 14 years. I've been liberated from rabbit poop. Yes. I know. So you go from baby poop to rabbit poop. It's oh, all a continuum. <laughs> so, so let me ask you about um, your husband, what role does he play in all of this? Does he ever come up with an idea from a dad perspective? No. <laughs> well, you know, we he and I co-ran our a book publishing company for 18 years. Wow. So when I when I first wrote that first book that we were talking about, um, and I self-published it, that led to like I don't know, 50 more books that I self-published. And so we had our own business for 18 years. And he was like, you know, the operations side and inventory and financial and blah, blah, blah. And then I was creative and product development. So we worked very closely, you know, like his desk, like right there. And I was sitting five feet from him for 18 years. And in 2010, we ended our business. And... Um, but it was like I wanted to continue, but I didn't want to be doing it myself anymore. It was just really exhausting after a while. Mm -hmm. And so I went on the search for a publishing partner, and that's when Sourcebooks and I created our partnership. So Jim jumped back into the corporate world, and now Sourcebooks is my publishing partner. And so I'm back independent writing and illustrating for them. Well, um, it's time that you end as a business and not the relationship. Believe me, it was close. <laughs> no, it was hard though to run a business with your husband, and especially because we were a small business, as you know. You know, we had maybe six employees, and and as the woman, I would get really close with the employees, and we'd be trading baby clothes, and then the husband was kind of the heavy, trying to keep the rules, and ah, so I felt caught in the middle sometimes. Like I know he's my husband, but yeah, he's being kind of a, a jerk right now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what? Which um? Which book is your favorite title? Do you have one? Oh gosh, I'd probably go with. Wow. Oh, I, I was gonna say if I could keep you little, and that literally that title popped out of my mouth. You know, I I had my hand on the head of one of my kids, and I'm just squishing them down, and I'm like, oh, if I could keep you little, i have you stop growing. And then the marketing side of me went, if I could keep you little. That's a great book title. <laughs> so I love the sentiment of that book because it it's timeless, you know, and whether you're a mom with a child who's going to kindergarten or he's going to college, you feel the same exact way. And yeah. So I love I love that it, it stretches across all ages, um, but I think my new favorite might be my newest book called "You Are My Heart," and that is one that was the one again that just came out in January. That okay, that's that one, and this one puts into words uh, like we set out in parenthood to be the teachers and we're going to teach our kids all this great stuff. And then, wow, they end up teaching us all this stuff. And that really was born out of my move last summer. I was really struggling. I was sad and I was depressed. <laughs> and I left everything I knew after 25 years and I left all those friends who knew my kids and loved our family and I was starting from scratch. And it was my kids really who helped me through it. That you know, my daughter's sitting on my bed and she's like, Mom, would God really put us out here if he didn't have something for us here? And they would try to get me to laugh and they're like, Come on, let's get in the car and go on an adventure. And I was like, Wow, you are teaching me courage. You're teaching me joy in the midst of sadness. And 
So I, I wrote about that, you know, all the gifts our kids give us too, and put that into words for my newest book. So it's it's when I read my books and I know what inspired them, I can go right back to that moment or that reason that I wrote a certain book, and I just relove it all over again. <laughs> so um, for some of the moms who, the Chick-fil-A moms who are watching and, and maybe listening, a lot of them have writing aspirations. Um, what would you say to a mom or even a business, because you, you run and started a business as well, or you've started and run a business, what yeah. would be your advice to, to those women? Oh, gosh. You mean in terms of, like, how to get started or? You know, what did you learn along the way that you wish you had maybe known at the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I think I think it's sort of this combination of I, I've learned so much about. I, I felt like I spent a lot of my business years really fearful, if that makes sense. You know, I just felt like I was um, afraid of not being accepted or liked or my ideas being embraced, and that got in the way a lot of like, oh, I'm afraid to show this person that idea. And I realized that it really comes back to being super connected to yourself and believing that, um, how do I want to say it, just being really connected to your own heart. And I found that that gave me the bravery to go out and feel like my ideas uh, deserve to be seen. Mm -hmm. And also to find the courage and I just kept like mantras you know I'd be one of my favorites was in 10 seconds this insane moment of courage will be history and that propelled me through anything I knew that if I had to give a presentation to some buyer that in my mind was so powerful and right. so much cooler than me it was like well in 10 minutes this this will already be the past and I can already be telling my friends over lunch oh yeah and then I met with the buyer and um, so to just kind of find your brave and whatever it means to that's, do that. That's really, really good um, good advice. So what other authors or types of books do you admire as a writer? I admire, you know, since I do sentiment and my books are really, I write for the mom's heart. I, I mean, I write kids' books, but I think even more they're mom books. They are touching the mom's heart, and they're giving the mom the words to connect with the child. So I admire the authors who can really write for the kid. You know, like one of my favorite books is The Day the Crayons Quit. I don't know if you know that one, but he, he writes from the crayons perspective. I mean, how brilliant is that? I admire uh, Mo Willems, who just, they write silly, and they write... Um, yeah, they just capture a kid's imagination in a way that I really, I can't do. So I admire people who have the talent I don't. Well, and then I, on the, I, what's that? I was just going to say, as someone who writes business books, I just admire that you can think up and imaginary <laughs> things because all I write about is facts and very black and white kind of issues. Yeah. I think it's amazing that you can, kind of create things that aren't real. Like to me, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. Oh, you're, thank you. Thank you for that. I think we're always looking at the people who do the things we don't do. And um, similar, similarly, I hope someday to write kind of a, a memoir-y type book. So I love reading memoirs. Love, love memoirs. Like The Glass Castle is one of my favorite memoirs. And um, I don't know if you've read that one. Jeanette Wells writes about her crazy childhood, and I'm just captivated by stories. You read them, and you're like, I can't believe you actually lived through that. So I love that kind of book, too. Um, so um, I'm kind of interested only because we're, we've are we been talking about Chick-fil-A. Have you ever noticed you kind of get hungry for Chick-fil-A, like when you start talking about it? Like, And you always get hungry on a Sunday when you can't have it, right? Um, of course. I'm just kind of interesting. Interested. I always ask people this: What's your favorite food at Chick Fil A? Uh, I would say it's not so much food, but drink like that lemonade, slushies kind of stuff. That's more my thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what I've been hearing uh, uh, lately. Um, okay, so from one adopted mom to another, um, I'd love to hear what inspired you about um, I Wish For You book because, you know, I just, I think, um, I think when you go through the adoption process, it, um, it's just one of those experiences that every single one is unique and I, I'm just kind of interested in, in the thoughts behind that book. Well, I'm going to surprise you by saying that I'm not an adoptive mom. <laughs> okay, well, I am an adoptive mom is what I meant yes. to say. But I am surrounded, um, I'm surrounded in my life by adoptive moms. You know, I had friends who, you know, went to the Ukraine and South America and um, across the U.S. to bring their children home. And that the point of what you're saying is that every story is so different. And they could all tell this completely unique tale of how they waited and wished and hoped and dreamed about this child. And yet, every single one would tell you that they, that, that child is their wish come true and that they believe that child was meant for them. They believe that child was waiting for them and belongs in their family. And so what I try to do with my books is to listen to the commonalities. I like to tell people I write for the unique everybody, and it is everybody's story is different, but it really comes down to all these universal truths about how we feel about our kids that unites us all. And that's I wished for you is listening to those moms and hearing the same things that they were saying and crafting a story that um, speaks to that. Yeah, and and you know what, you do it magnificently, and I, that's why I like. How does she know how an adoptive mother feels, like if she doesn't hasn't been through it? That's just amazing that you can take those little nuggets from a whole bunch of different stories. And you are right that, you know, you just there was no other babies that were meant for me other than my daughters, and. You know exactly, exactly. Every day, yeah. Unanswered prayer of, you know, I prayed every day to get pregnant, and, and thank God I didn't, right? Because I wouldn't have my daughter. So, um, and, the, and the waiting is the other theme of adoption: is the waiting and waiting, and you just never know. Am I going to get that call today, or is it going to be next week? Or, oh, that part really. Right. There's so much waiting in in child making <laughs> family making you're either waiting to see the stick or the phone call or oh yeah a lot yeah, of waiting once the child comes in your life there's a lot of waiting you like can't wait until they're out of diapers you can't wait until they're out of college you can't wait like then it's like like you're waiting for things to pass right so yeah. um, if we could all just the, realize Yes, or you're waiting for grandkids. I meet a lot of those women. They're like, oh, I, I'm like, do you have, no, I'm not personally, believe me, but I will meet a lot of women at, like, book events, and, I'll, you know, they'll be like, well, I hope to buy your books someday, but my daughter <laughs> hasn't had any babies yet. No, I, I'm not even, even remotely close to that. I still want to just go to Chick-fil-A and pick up, I wish I could keep you little and hooray for you, and... The and they aren't, aren't they cute size? I mean, look at how cute they are. They're so They're just so little. They're three inches by three inches. I think that's so cute. They're, yeah, they're absolutely adorable, and you're going to be able to get them at Chick-fil-A. So, Marianne, I want to thank you so much for spending some of your time with us today. It was so interesting to learn all that's in your head and, and how it gets into these beautiful books, and um, we really – really appreciate it and I want to thank um, all of you who are Chick-fil-A moms for attending this informative and fun broadcast and we hope you've enjoyed this exclusive opportunity brought to you by Chick-fil-A and remember that Chick-fil-A kids meals have the board books from Mary Ann available in them upon request for your toddlers three and under. So thank you so much everyone for joining us today and um, I'm Maria Bailey with Marianne Richmond, thank you so much on behalf of Chick-fil-A for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Marianne.